Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Video Web Chapel Service this morning from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Tell City, Indiana. The first Sunday of the month, we pre-record a video chapel so that all of our members may partake in the divine service. To number first, All Saints Day, a great multitude from all tribes and peoples and languages cry out, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, as we'll hear in Revelation chapter 7 this morning. Faith-filled saints from every place and time, with unified voices, eternally magnify the Lamb of God and as his beloved children. We too shall see him as he is, as we'll learn from 1 John chapter 3. Joined with a throng of angels and myriad of saints, we shall serve him day and night in his temple, as again we'll hear in Revelation chapter 7. In our earthly tensions, vacillating between saint and sinner, faith and doubt, sacred and profane, we earnestly seek Jesus to calm our fears, comfort our spirits, and forgive our sins. The Holy Spirit, through faith in Christ, propels us forward, fortifying us in word and sacrament to our eternal home. In the midst of our constant struggle as believers, we need to be blessed, and so we are. The poor in spirit, the meek, the hungry, the thirsty, the merciful, the pure, the persecuted are all blessed in Christ Jesus, and we most certainly will inherit the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus teaches us in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. May you be blessed through the hearing of Christ's word. But especially do we invite you to join us in person every Sunday morning here at the corner of 12th and Pestalozzi in Tell City, Indiana. If you live further away, please check the video links that are here listed in order that you can find a church home near you and be glad to come into the house of the Lord and to join with angels and archangels and with all the saints in heaven above and saints here on earth in this one body of Christ as Jesus draws near to us to bless us and comfort us by his Holy Spirit with the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, uh-huh.
begin with the words where our God has called us to be saints by naming us as his beloved children in the waters of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for the celebration, the festival of all saints, is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his master. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with a tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is the honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer, or the collect, for this day. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and all places into the one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them, we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On my heart imprint thine image, blessed Jesus, King of grace. That life's riches, cares, and pleasures have no power thee to efface. This the superscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from the Revelation to St. John chapter 7. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising sun with a seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal. 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi. 12,000 from the tribe of Ishakar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and all around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? 
And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God the Holy Gospel for the Feast of All Saints. It's from St. Matthew, chapter 5. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. When others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard the word of our God, we join together in confessing the faith the Holy Spirit has given us in the waters of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father. From our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for the Feast of All Saints is from 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed that we shall what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Thus far our text. In Christ Jesus, our blessed Savior, to Christian friends. November 1st, the Christian Church in the West celebrates All Saints Day. Do you know any Lutheran saints? Or do you think saints? We are Lutherans. We don't have any saints. Yet if you turn to the front page of your hymnal, starting about Roman numeral 10, you'll find the church here mapped out for us. On page 11, we see a list of feasts and festivals that include the days that list saints. Turning to page 12, we find a year full of commemorations of people throughout the history of Christianity. Are these people saints? What makes a person a saint? According to the Roman Catholic theology, to be recognized as a saint, one must have lived an extraordinary, exemplary Christian life and died. After two years, that person's bishop can recognize that person as a servant of God. Then their works and writings are carefully examined, and a guild is formed to promote their sainthood. At some point, that individual is declared non-cultus, and their body is exhumed and examined, and relics are collected. When enough evidence is collected, the Pope will declare the individual heroic in virtue, and they will be given the title venerable. Prayer cards may be issued encouraging the faithful to pray to them. The next step is to be beautified. That is declared blessed on the evidence that the individual is in heaven for either being a martyr, martyr or confessor of the faith. If that person has not been martyred for the faith, and a miracle must be attributed to them praying to them, then they'll be declared a saint and canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. On the other hand, to be a saint in the Reformed Church, one must not must do or not do certain things. Some Reformed bodies call you a saint if you don't drink, smoke, or dress up on Halloween. Others call you a saint if you're successful, fill mega churches with members, write best-selling Christian books, on how to live according to successful lives, according to new discovered principles. To be a saint in Islam, one must live the five pillars of the Islamic faith. Confess there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Pray five times a day towards Mecca. Give alms for the poor Muslims. Fast during the month of Ramadan and make a trip to Mecca and Saudi Arabia at least once during their lifetime. The fastest path for Islamic sainthood is to die in a holy war, fighting the infidels, our non-Islamic peoples. To be a Hindu saint, one must live a perfect life or make extreme sacrifice. About 10 years ago, Ramveer Singh Baghel, who was 35 at that time of the Hami district in India, sliced off his tongue as an offering to the goddess Amba. Sacrifice made an instant deity in the local temple. To be a Latter-day Saint, according to Mormonism, is to live a moral life following the teachings of Joseph Smith, to have a burning in the bosom, and to ignore the clear word of the Bible, instead to follow the Book of Mormon and the doctrines and covenants, to be initiated into the secret temple rituals, to wear holy underwear, to follow the present prophet and to raise a family within Mormon marriage. The only way for a woman to be raised on the last day is to have totally pleased your husband during this life. We could go on all morning, tracing what it means to be a saint in the religions of this world. But they all have a common theme. They are doable. Men and women can achieve sainthood if they try hard enough, if they do the right things. They are religions of the law, and the world loves them, and they call them holy. But to be a saint in the Lutheran Church is, first of all, to be 100% a sinner, a sinner who hungers and thirsts for righteousness that is not his own, but God's free gift in Christ Jesus. 
100% sinner, declared 100% saint by the Father in the flesh and blood of Jesus, reborn by the Holy Spirit in the Word and Sacrament. This makes no sense to the world. It's a mystery. Therefore, let us turn away from our worldly sense of thinking and learn the mystery of sainthood. True saints are born of God, but unknown to the world. True sainthood is not man-made. It's God breathed in water born. Scripture is clear when it teaches us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law condemns us as sinners. We have not feared, loved, and trusted in the only true God, the triune God, with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. It isn't the law that is at fault. It's our sinful nature, inherited from our first father, Adam, conceived and born in sin. We cannot achieve sainthood by our own good works. Scripture is clear that we are by nature spiritually dead, blind, and enemies of God. We deserve nothing but hell. The good works that the world commends is worthy of calling us saints. The Lord God calls rubbish. Isaiah puts it this way, but we like an unclean thing and all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. We need true righteousness, not a man-made sham imagined goodness. Here's the mystery. Though we sin against the only true God, he seeks us out to save us even while we were still sinners. Behold, St. John writes, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. A mystery is never fully uncovered. It becomes more wondrous the more you study and examine it. So does the mystery of God's love for us sinners. We rebelled. We justly deserved hell. But behold, the love the Father has bestowed on us. He calls us his own beloved children. John takes us back to our Lord Jesus' baptism in the Jordan, where the heavens were torn open, and God the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove, and God the Father spoke from heaven, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Now God the Father says the same of you, dear sinner. In the waters of your baptism, God the Father has declared you to be his own, he has clothed you in the perfect life of Jesus. He has washed you sinless in Christ's blood. He has joined you to his body. He declares you justified, not guilty, a saint. God the Holy Spirit breathes faith into your heart through God's word spoken. Never faith in yourself or faith in faith, but faith that clings to Christ Jesus alone. That see all that he has done and continues to do in this world through his church is done for you, the Lord God has elected you from eternity to be his own. Here's a mystery that offends the world. The world says, you can't know if you are going to be saved. A Christian in the church knows that she is a child of God, forgiven, declared a saint, sought by her loving father from eternity. St. Paul would put it this way in Romans chapter 8. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. How do you know that God is predestined to save you? You are baptized into Christ. He places you in his church. He justifies you through the forgiveness of sins spoken. He preserves you in your baptismal faith through the preaching of his word and the gifts of his sacraments until he brings you through death to life eternal. The world calls us fools for such a Christ-centered faith. It does not know us because it does not know God the Father. Here John condemns all false religions in this world that deny the Trinity. Apart from Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. There is no knowing the one true God. As our Lord himself tells you in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The mystery of sainthood 
is that while we are in this world, we are not of this world. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he prayed to God the Father for you, saying these words, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Behold the deep mystery of God's love for you. Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. You are the beloved of the Lord. What belongs to Christ Jesus has become yours. What was yours, Jesus has taken into himself. And he has paid it for full, once and for all on the cross. Jesus became your brother, fully human, fully God, that he might open for you the gate of heaven through his flesh and blood. The mystery of God becoming flesh, the mystery of Christmas, boggles our human mind. The world scoffs at the idea, but we know that it is a historical truth. Christ's physical resurrection from the dead is not a nice story. It is historically verifiable. It is truth. But to many, too lazy to examine the facts. They buy in the world's mockery as being wise. In teaching about the gift we are given holy baptism, our Lord Jesus tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And again Jesus says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. See, everlasting life is not something you earn. It's a gift that's yours through the waters of baptism, the means by which God the Holy Spirit works Christ-centered faith in you, brought you to trust in God as your Father, who loves you so much that he sent his Son to die for you. Declared citizens of heaven, no longer can death frighten us. We know that as Jesus was in the resurrection on that first Easter morning, so we shall be on the day that he appears on Judgment Day. That day holds no fear for us according to faith. We look forward to these bodies being freed from sin, death, and corruption and becoming fully human. And We shall see Jesus face to face forever in the beauty and joy of heaven. Why doesn't our Lord reveal the details of heaven and what we shall be like in greater detail? The Lord keeps it a mystery so that we tend to the work that he has called us to carry out here and now in our daily vocations. So the Christian saint serves their fellow human beings in love, unknown to the world, but known to God. They live their baptism in daily repentance. What does that mean? Daily we die to sin. We fight against our corrupt nature, our old Adam, exposed by the Ten Commandments. Daily we are made alive by the triune God through the word and water of our baptism, that is why the Christian begins and ends your day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, making the sign of the Holy Cross. As citizens of heaven, we have a hope that no pandemic, no disease, no cancer, nothing can ever take from us. For we read, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Coming to the Lord's table, we have a foretaste of the feast to come. The great mystery of our hope is expressed in the words of our liturgy. For at the Lord's table we feast with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven. At the Lord's supper, you sit at table with Jesus and all your loved ones who have fallen asleep. In this one holy Christian faith, saints have hope. For we know that God the Father controls history for the sake of the gospel. We have hope for we know that we are forgiven. That our Lord is working all things for our good. Filled with the hope of heaven, that baptism assures us that if we daily die to self, and we rise to live for those in our other and our lives. The world mocks Christianity, saying, All Christians are concerned about is heaven, and not making this world a better place. Such people are ignorant of history. It was Christians dying to self, living for others who founded hospitals, orphanages, schools, instituted social changes to free slaves, protect the unborn and women. It was Christians 
freed science from superstitions of Aristotelian philosophy to discover the great mysteries of the God who created life. It was Christianity that blessed us with a great artist, musicians, scientists, theologians, and rulers. It was heavenly-minded saints filled with hope that gave all that they had to serve their fellow sinful human beings. Here is the mystery of sainthood, that as we daily die to self, we're filled with the hope of heaven. We rise anew, created in Christ to serve our fellow human beings in love through the vocations that our God has called us to labor in. See, for our work in the Lord is never in vain. So do you know any Lutheran saints? You are one, dear child. As your faithful parents and grandparents who walk before you are also ones who are now home in heaven. In our Augsburg Confession, Article 21, we put it this way. Our churches teach that the remembrance of saints may be commended to us so that we may imitate their faith and good works according to our calling. Thus the emperor may follow the example of David in waging war to drive the Turk out of his country. For like David, the emperor is a king. However, the scriptures do not teach us to pray to saints or to seek their help. For the only mediator, propitiation, high priest, and intercessor whom the scriptures set before us is Christ. He is to be prayed to. And he has promised to hear our prayers. Such worship of Christ especially approves, namely, that in all afflictions he be called upon. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. 1 John 2, 1. Dear sinners, declared saints by your Father, rejoice in the mystery of sainthood that God the Father has bestowed upon us in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, who has given us his Holy Spirit, that we might trust in him through his word alone. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is above all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to their joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised in mortality and corruption, and be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Grant wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Bless those who serve in the armed forces of these United States. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Preserve all travel, those in need, the sick and the injured, and all who mourn. Heal according to your good and gracious will, Wilson, Bob, Joetta, Dean, and Sherry. Be with those who are shut in, Leona, David, Sharon, and Randy, and assure them of your continual presence. And bless those who celebrate birthdays this week. Bless Joetta, that they might rejoice that in you have they have a Father who showers them richly and daily with all they need to support their bodies in life. Give your Holy Spirit to relieve and comfort them in confidence of saving faith. Lord, in your mercy, for our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, O Lord, and bring us to the last of your joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
taught by our Lord, and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and the confession of your name abide unto the end, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Thank you for having joined us today at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Tell City, Indiana, for our video chapel, Proclaiming Christ's Word to You. We invite you to join us here in person every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the corner of 12th and Pestalozzi, or to consult the video links that are listed here, in order that you can find a church home near you and be an active living member of Christ's church within the community in which you live. May the Lord bless you with his word. By which in baptism he has called you, the sinner, to be a saint, his own beloved child in Christ Jesus. <laughs>